Hey, what's up guys? We're back with another video. Today I've got an Atari 1050 that was sent to me by one of the viewers and he's asked me to perform an upgrade on it. And the upgrade is actually called the Mini Speedy. Now, I went to the website for this product and it shows the domain as being for sale. You can still email the individual, but apparently the website is down. Now, interestingly enough, I found that if you go specifically to the link where the documentation is located, you can find the PDF on how to install this. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what this mini speedy 1050 does. It basically is a new board that you can mount inside the 1050 drive. It takes the place of the internal 6507 CPU and the ROM that is normally stock on the 1050 and modifies it with obviously newer code, newer routines, and allows you to get some better performance out of your 1050 drive. So here's the back of the board. As you can see, it's got um, the header pins that plugs into the standard CPU slot on the 1050 drive. And then it's got the ROM piggy board, you know, or mounted on the actual board itself. So we're going to go ahead and take the 1050 apart and see how we can get this upgrade installed. So here's our drive mechanism of our Atari 1050. We're just going to fold that back for a minute while we get into the board. We've got a nice RF shield here that we need to be, we need to remove it in order to get access to the CPU and the ROM. And as you can see here, we've got the ROM, copyright 1983. Doesn't even, that, now that may not be a standard Atari ROM, that may be something aftermarket, but there's the 6507 processor, and there is the ROM, Tandon Corporation. Hmm. I don't know if that's factory from Atari, if not, maybe you guys can let me know in the uh, comments. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the drive mechanism while we're here and just make sure everything looks okay. Make sure the belt is not ready to fall apart. Seems to be okay. Seems to be fairly flexible still. So we'll go ahead and remove the 6507. Be very careful. These drives are old, these boards are old, so we always want to take precaution when working with these drives and always try and be very careful. So let's go ahead and remove this, this actual CPU here, which is a 6507. And let's go ahead and pull out the stock, what we are assuming to be the stock ROM. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and mount this mini speedy 1050 board into the socket where the CPU is located. The instructions say that this board will slightly sit on top of one of the trim pots or the variable resistors on the main board. It's fine. I've looked at it from, from the side, and um, this board is mounted uh, far enough into the socket where it shouldn't be an issue of it coming out or not making good contact. This is a closer look of how that PCB rests on the main board. And you can see here the corner of the Mini Speedy is actually sitting on top of this trim pot. It's actually quite okay. Don't worry about it. Like I said, it's mounted good enough where it's not going to come loose and it's not going to cause any problems. So the next part in the upgrade process is we're going to have to remove the main PCB from the drive housing. So there are several connectors that we need to disconnect in order to get the drive mechanism out and away from the PCB. And by the way, take good pictures of how these connectors are mounted on the board and their orientation. You will definitely thank yourself after the fact when you're going to plug these back in. 
The board is held in with a couple of plastic tabs that have to be pushed back in order to release the board. So just be a little careful. Again, this is old plastic. Take your finger or a screwdriver and once you get those tabs pushed out of the way, the board will release pretty easily. Now our goal is to remove four capacitors, C56, C57, C58, and C61. They're all located in this upper corner of the PCB back near the SIO connector. These are going to have to be removed in order for the upgrade to fully function the way it's designed to. So we're going to take this board over to the desk and get these removed. All right, so there we have it. We have the four capacitors removed from the board. So now we're ready to reassemble this drive, put it back together and do some testing to see if we get the outcome we expect.
All right, so we've got the drive back together. Now, one thing I wanted to show you guys, um, if you've ever seen a 1050 drive, when you normally turn it on, the spindle will turn for a few seconds. And what I've noticed is with this upgrade, when you turn the drive on and you have a diskette in the drive, it actually spins for just maybe like one or two seconds and it stops very quickly, which is something a little bit different than the normal operation of the 1050. See how it just spun there for like maybe one second or a half a second and then it actually stops. All right, guys, so we have the 1050 connected back to the Atari 130XE, and we're going to go ahead and turn the computer on with the drive bay open, and watch what happens. So you hear a little bit of a tone, and then we come into the actual internal BIOS program, which is called Speedy, the high-speed copy program, copyright 1987 Bebosoft. It's got a couple options here, but it's a very simple and basic copy program. It shows you how much RAM it has available, the format, the original source, and the destination. Obviously, in this case, is going to be OneDrive, Zeal in German, meaning destination. Um, we can change whether or not, with the select key, whether the destination drive, Zeal, Formatterin, Ja means yes, Nein means no. That means that it's going to format the destination disk before writing to it. So. Just to do a quick test, I've got a DOS 2.5 master disk here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the drive. We hit start. It says original, meaning insert the original on the disk. Now you can hear how fast it's reading the sectors and the tracks from the drive. I'm pretty sure the microphone is picking this up, but you can tell through the audio that it's actually going in high speed mode. Now, one thing to realize is that this data is not actually being transferred to the Atari, it's actually being read into the buffer of the upgrade board here internally, which makes it super fast. The Atari is basically acting as a terminal at this point. All right, so I'm taking the 2.5 out master, I'm putting in a blank floppy, and what this should do is it should format this disk, insert destination, which it is, Zeal Formatterin, is formatting this destination disk first, and then it's gonna actually write those tracks out to the drive. All right, there it goes. And you can see how fast it's writing those sectors to the disk. I don't know if you can hear it or not. I'm going to take the microphone and put it next to the TV. You can hear how fast that's writing. And just that quickly, it copied that disk. Now, I'm going to do another test here. Um, I've got actually the Summer Games, side A and B. This is a game written by Epic Software. And I'm pretty sure this disk has a lot more information than that DOS. 2.5 master head. So let's go ahead and put this one in as the source. Hit start. And you're going to see it read that disk up. You can hear the high speed SIO going to work. Again, this data is being read inside the drive's memory, not the computer. All right, go ahead and put in the same floppy I used for the DOS disk. Hit start. It's going to go ahead and format it. And it's writing it. see just how fast it's writing those sectors. I mean, this makes copying disks so fast. All right, there we go. Now, just as a test, we'll go ahead and turn the computer off with that disk in there. 
let's boot the computer and make sure that it worked. And you can actually hear the Atari loading. Wow, that was fast. All right, so there you have it. High speed copying with the Mini Speedy 1050 upgrade. Hey guys. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm back drinking coffee with Bruce Lee. And as we all know, Bruce Lee makes coffee a hell of a lot better. Um, anyway, so it's been a while since we've seen each other, since I've made a video. I'm very busy with my regular day job as a software engineer. However, I do have some up coming and new video content that I'm making for you. One of them is about a new mechanical keyboard that has been created for the Atari 130XE. Can you hear that? Ah, nice mechanical keys. I've got a video about this coming up. I'm going to show you all about it, where I got it from, who's making them, and where you can get your own. I also have this 3D printed cartridge expander module for the 130XE. It has a small circuit board, plugs into the back of the 130XE cartridge port, like this, and then you can actually put the cartridges in from the top without having to manipulate the computer and get to it from the back. So I'm also going to show you how I did this, where I got the parts from the PCB board and the design file for the 3D print of that. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I promise you I got some videos coming up. I've actually, my main um, jobs project has slowed down a little bit. I've gotten a lot of it done, so I've got some more time to make videos, and I'm going to be making some more videos for our enjoyment as the Atari aficionados that we are. Um, people ask me, do you still use the Atari? I do. I use it every week. I play games on it. I do some programming. I play around with it. I play around with the FujiNet. It's a, great, it's a great computer, it's still fun to use, and I highly recommend anyone who's interested in the Atari that you go out and find yourself one. Um, also, I'm going to leave some links below. Follow the FujiNet project. The guys over there are doing a tremendous job keeping that project going and expanding it to other platforms. And also the Atari Antic podcast, I'll leave a link there. They're putting out great content every month, so check it out there. And uh, anyway, if you like what you see in here, subscribe you know, like all that good stuff and uh, see you soon. Thanks for watching. Mm. Peace.